Hi, Dave here. Uh, today I have a tour of an extremely unique telescope. You will never find another one quite like this. I know that for a fact because I made this one, or at least I assembled it and made some components uh, of the telescope. And it's completely unique. There's nothing else like it. I am calling this, somewhat reluctantly, I'm calling it a Zeistron, a Zeiss Unitron, um, although it's got components from other makers as well, uh, it's mainly, it's a, it's a Zeiss 50 millimeter, uh, about F11, 540, 540 millimeters focal length. A very famous kind of a lens, a small Zeiss lens. Beautiful, as always, with the Zeiss, it's a superb. It has been said that the Zeiss 50 millimeter is the best 50 millimeter lens that it exists, and that's probably true. If it's not true, it's very close to 100% accurate because it's a beautiful, beautiful little lens. Anyway, the lens is so beautiful uh, that I decided I wanted to put it together with a really nice optical tube assembly, and I used some components from Unitron. By the way, no Unitrons were sacrificed in the making of this telescope, at least not at my hands. Uh, the Unitron components here all came from uh, other sources, mostly eBay or other online sources, Astromart or Cloudy Nights, as individual components. And uh, I did not personally dissect any telescope to take these apart. As a matter of fact, I guess you could say I'm recycling them because uh, for whatever reason, they, the parts became available. I'm now using them in a brand new and very unique uh, little telescope. So let me tell you a little bit about this. First of all, the optical tube assembly. This tube is from a 60 millimeter Unitron that was damaged. Um, and I cut it. Of course, I had to cut it. It was damaged up at the front of the tube. It's seriously dented. So I cut it and I uh, I used a, this is actually a, a different focuser I bought independently. It is a Unitron. Uh, someone else painted over the Unitron. I didn't touch it. Um, but somebody else painted over the Unitron uh, logo on it. It's still there. You can still read it underneath the paint. Anyway, it is a Unitron focuser, probably from about a three inch telescope. This is a Unitron dew shield from that same uh, broken telescope. And in this particular case, it was pretty heavily damaged, so I just st stripped the paint off. And of course, you have a beautiful brass tube underneath that. So I took advantage of that. This little finder is from a Unitron 60 millimeter uh, telescope, and it's got the Unitron 60 millimeter brackets. This is something I don't believe Unitron ever did, although they did this with their um, with their solar screen holders. They made a separate little base for it that you can take off and add. So you can take this off and put it back on. And I did that with the finder. It's a little bit unique and uh, a little strange, but kind of interesting. And I, I decided to do some, some fun little different kinds of things with this telescope. So you basically have a, a Zeiss telescope objective. This has an inch and a quarter uh, focuser uh, this will accept inch and a quarter eyepieces. The mount here is a Tasco. It's a very small Tasco mount. And it's a fairly traditional, quite commonplace, uh, inexpensive small mount. I made these uh, fancy brass counterweights. This thing turned out to be a little heavy anyway. And I had some brass, so I decided, why not? Let's, let's pretty it up. Let's make it fancy. So I put some nice brass counterweights on, on the telescope. This mount here, all of this is handmade by me. I made all this stuff using what I laid, the milling machine and so forth. The knobs were commercially purchased, modified in many cases, but uh, commercial knobs. And it all comes apart, so this will all fit into a nice little box. I wanted to show you how this comes apart. It comes apart in lots and lots of little pieces. Zeiss would very often have made their telescopes to come um, in little parts so that you could you could separate them and put them in a nice little storage case of some sort. Unitron was the same way. And this is no different. You can take this apart, you 
have the tube assembly here, finder here. You can even take the cradle off if you want. Oops. One of the things with Unitrons is you're always dropping nuts and bolts and losing them down the furnace vent, <laughs> all over the place, under the bed. <laughs> Any place they can go, they will. So you can take this apart into lots and lots and lots of little tiny pieces. Clock drives comes off like so. This is the little mounting pinion I made for that. Alright, now it's important not to drop the counterweights on any of the delicate parts. I've learned that the hard way. And I deliberately designed this so that it would come apart. This mount comes apart into several smaller components like this. Perhaps one day I will make a nice little custom wooden box for it or something. I'm not sure. This comes off like that. This is the biggest component. This could even be taken apart with some bolts holding it together there. Anyway, there's my Zeistron telescope and you can easily see how that would fit in to a nice fairly compact little box. What I really like about this, it makes it extremely unique, even more unique than it already was, is the fact that it has a clock drive here. This is a wind-up clock drive. And back in the 1960s, Tasco sold a wind-up clock drive. It was used on a, a larger mount than this. It was used on a, on a mount for a 4-inch telescope. But I discovered that the gear ratio was right so that it will work on this telescope. And it's mounted right here. I made a little mount for it. It's mounted right here. And this, there's a, a, a pinion that engages this gear. And you can wind this thing up. It sounds like insects. You, I'm probably, you cannot hear that. But it sounds like there are a bunch of little insects moving at very high speed inside that box, driving this thing. And for all I know, it could be. I never did take the thing apart. So it could be little tiny ants in there turning on a treadmill of some sort. I don't know. Anyway, this thing, believe it or not, actually tracks pretty darn well. And one of the things with these kinds of mounts, with clock drives in general, uh, especially these uh, less robust ones like the weight driven clock drive and this one is that the telescope has to be balanced in a very particular way very close to an ideal balance and it has to be weighted so that it wants to fall in uh, motions of right ascension so that it wants to fall the right direction then the clock drive acts more like an escapement so it allows it to very slowly fall and when you set it up that way it works beautifully. I was amazed at how well this thing tracks. It tracks very, very nicely. You can set the tracking right here with this little control there. Um, you can turn it off uh, and it tracks for about 20 minutes or so and it does quite nicely. Uh, now, the idea that it would be a tracking mount in something this small and even having a finder on it, most people that build a 50 millimeter Zeiss telescope to don't even bother to put a finder on it. It's it's a little silly. It really doesn't need one. But I did it for uh, a sense of whimsy and to make it unique and to make it fun and, and charming. So I hope you've enjoyed my tour of my little Zeistron 50mm telescope. Thank you.